Hey guys, welcome back to the Mind of Brandon. Welcome back to another Sunday of Science and Spirituality. Happy Easter, everyone. As indicated by the title of this video, I'm going to be talking about the 10 questions that people who don't believe in gods are expected to answer. Are you absolutely sure there is no God? Well, technically it depends on how you're using the word God. We do want to keep in mind that this is a word that is quite subject to interpretation. People do use this word in different ways. That being said, if you're using God uh, as a way of referring to whatever it was that is you know, responsible for the generation of matter in the universe, uh, well, you know, I do believe that there's something responsible for the generation of matter in this universe. Uh, and that would be vacuum energy, okay? So, uh, you know, if your attitude is, well, you know, God's just whatever is responsible for that, then I'm of the attitude that you're simply deifying vacuum energy by calling it God, right? Uh, that being said, uh, if you're someone who uses the word God uh, in reference to the idea that something with some semblance of intelligence may have had something to do with setting in motion the formation of the universe, uh, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm not convinced that that doesn't exist. Uh, it, it might. I'm just not particularly aware of any good evidence that it exists. I don't have a reason to believe that it exists. That being said, if you're using God to refer to uh, you know, the, the character in the Bible who creates heaven and earth in six days and then rests on the seventh, forms man from the dust of the ground, forms woman from the rib of man, puts him in a garden with a talking snake and mystical trees that grow magical fruits. Yeah, that God does not exist. I am absolutely sure of that. What happens when you die? Well, I've never died before, but my understanding of death is that uh, it's when you lose consciousness, your brain stops working, uh, you stop breathing, your heart stops pumping blood, and then your body is disposed of in some way. Uh, maybe you're, you're buried or cremated, uh, maybe like Osama bin Laden, you're dropped in the ocean, fed to the sharks, something like that. Maybe you get hacked up and fed to pigs. I, you know, there's, there's any number of ways that you can dispose of, of a body. Yeah, that's, that's the gist of it. What if you are wrong and there is a heaven? Then I guess I'll see you there? Cool. Where do you get your morality from? Nowhere. I don't have a code of morality that I'm particularly aware of. I don't need one. Why would I? What, what practical use are they? People's moral codes seem to do more to pit us against each other and cause the world's problems than they do to solve them. Yeah, no thanks. If there is no God, can we do whatever we want? Nope. Try as you might. You're not going to be able to fly around like Superman or one of those characters on Dragon Ball Z, right? You're just not going to be able to do it. You can't. If there's no God, how does your life have meaning? Well, uh, the word life is defined quite arbitrarily, but I mean, if you're not talking about like a word, if you're just like talking about like my actual lifespan or whatever, um, my life experiences, uh, you know, what, what, is the, what is the meaning of all that? Uh, well, you can't really define it the, the same way that you define like words. So this is actually kind of an ill-formed question as far as I can tell. Where did the universe come from? Ah, yes. Universe. Another word that is subject to interpretation. People do use this word in different ways. When I was a kid, I was taught that the word universe was basically a way of referring to the totality of all that exists. Now, if that's the case, if that's how we're using this word, then asking where does it come from that's another ill-formed question. It doesn't really make any sense. If the universe represents the totality of all that exists, then there's no other where for it to have come from. All wheres are already accounted for, okay? That being said, uh, later in life, I was introduced to the idea that the universe was created by 
an entity, God, who both transcends and predates the universe. So if the universe is the totality of all that exists, then there is no transcendent creator God that predates the universe. If, however, there is a transcendent creator God that predates the universe, then the universe is not all that exists. So this raises the question, what is the universe if it's not all that exists? And this is a question we have to revisit when we consider the possibility of multiple universes. So, uh, the way I've come to understand this word universe, another way that we can use this if we're not referring to the totality of all that exists, basically it's this expanding bubble of space-time that's mass-producing galaxies and black holes. Since it's expanding, that demonstrates that it exists within a larger environment, you know, an environment into which it can move, okay? Uh, and in all probability, that environment is actually mass-producing other universes apart from our own. So in, in this context, we actually can answer uh, where the universe probably comes from, where it probably comes from is a multiverse, an environment that's mass-producing universes, these expanding bubbles of space-time that are mass-producing galaxies and black holes. What about miracles? I don't believe in them. How come every society has religion? Well, it's actually not true that all societies have religion, but then again it might just depend on how you're using the word religion. Because, of course, that's another word that's subject to interpretation. People do use that word in different ways. Do you really believe the world would be better off without religion? Yeah, I suspect so. I mean, each religion tends to come with its own arbitrary code of ethics, subjective morality, that sort of thing, which, as I mentioned earlier, really tends to do more to pit us against each other and cause problems in the world than it does to bring us together and solve the world's problems. Uh, I, I think for solving the world's problems, it would really be more practical to apply the scientific method for social concern. Yeah, that would be way more practical than relying on these archaic, folksy ways handed down over the generations from ancient ignoramuses that were worshiping the wind and the moon. All right, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with other people. If you're interested in watching my future videos, then subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all in the next one. So have a good one, guys, and peace.